Greetings, growers of the world. Jordan River with more Growcast growing content for you today. Today, we have a breeder feature. You guys love the breeder features. We are featuring covert genetics. Love covert genetics and what they're doing, working with these gaseous lines. I know you guys are going to love today's episode. Yet another breeder feature, powerful breeder feature in the bag. Before we jump in with covert, shout out to AC Infinity the leaders in grow fan manufacturing, plus now making tents affordable and thick acinfinity.com. Use code GROWCAST15 to save 15% across the board. There was an error with this code. It said it was a one-time use, but that has been fixed. Use GROWCAST15 as much as you want. Upgrade your fan, step up your ventilation game, get a sexy new AC Infinity tent. I think they're the thickest tents on the market. Uh, the 2000, I forget the uh, the unit of measurement there, but they're affordable, which is uh, the reason I, I really cannot wait to get my hands on one of these. I got a custom uh, controller mount on the outside of the tent. They look very, very sexy and they go nicely with your AC Infinity fans, which are the quietest, most powerful, simply the best fans on the market. I wouldn't grow with anything else. Growcast 1.5 for 15% off acinfinity.com. All right, everybody, enjoy today's breeder feature. We got uh, plant success coming back on the show. Great friends of the show. Uh, many new guests, many old favorites. Stay tuned. Thank you all for listening and enjoy the program. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to Growcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started, spread the show. Tell a grower, tell a smoker. It is really how we grow, and I appreciate it. It's one of the best ways you can support us. Make sure you subscribe, give us a good rating and review. I appreciate it, folks. Today, another breeder feature, one of the uh, favorite episode types here at Growcast, and today we have none other than Covert Genetics on the line. What's up, Covert? How you doing, Jordan? Thanks for having me here. I'm doing very well. Thank you for coming on. You've got quite a uh, impressive page here. Everybody can go find at Covert Genetics on Instagram. Uh, wow, man, some fire, some fire-looking buds you have on this page. Looks like you're a pretty Thank talented you. gardener yourself. Why don't we start from the beginning, though? Share as much of your story as you're willing to share and the creation of Covert Genetics as kind of a, uh, as a brand. Sure. <clears throat> um, I moved to Colorado uh, very beginning of 2013 from uh, Nebraska. Um, that's pretty much where my journey started. I uh, uh, started out in Estes Park, Colorado, up in the mountains, just uh, tinkering around, doing some personal breedings um and shared some of those seeds with uh some of my friends that i had made up there and uh it uh blossomed from that they really enjoyed them um asked uh if i had any other ones um obviously i did but i hadn't shared them with them so uh, i was able to offer them something new um but I, i had already created it obviously um, and it got me thinking, you know, if, um, they're that interested in, uh, some stuff that I just made playing around, you know, how far could this go at the time? Um, there really wasn't uh, a whole lot of, uh, American seed banks. Uh, a lot of people were still doing the overseas Euro, uh, Euro banks and right. stuff like that. Um, and so I just, <clears throat> I, I got rolling on it. I, I figured if, um, there wasn't many, there was, um, room for me at the table, so to speak. Blue water market, baby. It's a common story that I hear, which is, uh, you kind of are pressured by your peers for more. Like that's when a lot of these (laughs) breeders know that it's time to step it up as if people keep fucking knocking on your door. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, let's be honest, we could all use a little more income. Um, and at the time I was, I just moved here. Um, so everything was just super, super tight. I was trying to, uh, start a family trying to get established as far as uh, uh, living situations and all Ooh, that. And it's like, you. you know, if these, yeah. If these people are friends of mine and they're willing to offer me their hard earned money for something that I've, I've put work into, um, I feel like it's a mutual, um, a mutually beneficial situ- situation. Absolutely. Uh, they want something that I'm able to, to make and they're willing to pay me for it. So, um, let's, let's do this. I've got a family to feed a natural progression, man. I like that. It sounds like you had some breeding talent. Sounds like you had a knack. And then next thing, you know, uh, local growers hitting you up well, and now you're covert genetics, baby. That's uh, oddly that's enough. Stuff. I started out with, um, with dogs. I, uh, was very into, uh, um, breeding dogs and showing dogs prior to moving to Colorado. Oh, wow. And, um, I took my understanding of pedigrees 
and genetics in that aspect sure and and applied it with my my plants and um, how i breed and my selections that i make and, and everything in, in that realm love it man um, a lot of people kind of look at me like you, you, you take you know your, your breeding aspects from canines and apply them to plants and i'm just like you know, yeah. <laughs> male, male and female is X and Y. <laughs> we're, absolutely. Absolutely. Doing the deed is doing the deed. Nature's <laughs> nature's been doing it a lot longer than, than what we've been doing. You know, if we can just provide them a more adequate environment to do that in, um, the outcome is, is, uh, you know, more, uh, boutique, so to speak, you know? Absolutely, man. I love it. Speaking of boutique, I would say probably, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but chem brulee, really uh maybe your flagship strain this is this something that i've seen people growing out i've seen people crossing with wonderful wonderful strain is do you want to start there and talk about chem brulee a little bit or, or wherever uh, you want sure. to sure it it definitely wasn't a flagship um but it has turned into it uh it was just it was actually um something that i was able to make through the help of uh my friend very good friend brett of heart and soil oh yeah uh, we love Brett. project he's great yeah absolutely good um, friend of the show for sure, for sure. Uh, he he got me the cut of copper chem that I used to make uh, chem brulee. Oh, nice! And uh, from there, it was just uh, <laughs> it was a fan favorite. I didn't realize it was going to turn into uh, such a popular strain. Um, otherwise, I would have made uh, I would have used a much bigger plant <laughs> to make uh, more of those F one seeds. But uh, fast hours. forward, not to get on a different topic, but fast forward, I did make F twos of that because the demand was just so high. Nice. I just recently made a whole line off the Kimberley as well as F twos. Oh hell so. yeah, dude! Let's dive into that. Uh, my understanding is that gas is something the the kind of diesely gaseous profiles are what you're after, kind of that bitter. Uh, I'm I'm a funk guy that yeah. um, that uh, rancid, yeah. uh, the paint fumes, the the burning tires, um, <laughs> you know eight heads in a duffel bag. I'm, I'm that guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't really do fruits for my personal, uh, palate, sure. but I know a lot of people do. So I accommodate to that. It's not, it's not all about me, but in oh, the cool. end, um, my selections are made off of what Your I taste. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. What I visually find appealing as well as what I think other people might visually find appealing as well as profile, um, resistance to pest mildews. Uh, everything of the sort, just, um, simplicity of growth. Um, if it, if it takes a lot for me to, to keep it going and get it to where I need it to be, uh, I'm not running it. I'm not going to send it out the door for other people to, to holler back at me. Like, oh, hey, I love you know, that. I'm, I'm having issues with this pack. Um, cause even though I, I do refunds, every pack is guaranteed once by me, no questions asked. Um, and I, I, never really had to fulfill that because damn uh people just have great enjoyed results. your shit yeah <laughs> but would you well, say I mean, that's the, uh... the germination rates and the vigor and everything like that is there so i don't i don't ever really hear back of you know i i, I would like to have this pack replaced hell yeah i'll man. do it no questions asked but i i don't have to because that's, they that's don't. a good policy <laughs> Uh, but, but let me ask you this. Would you say that that's one of your biggest uh, values as a breeder, other than going after kind of the funky profiles that you like? It sounds like something that's easy to grow is maybe towards the top of your list, list of priorities when you're breeding. Would you would you agree with that? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, if if my feeding regimen and everything like that isn't um, suffice, uh, chances are other people's sure. are, aren't going to be. You know, yeah. I mean, mine's yeah. mine's a pretty simple. Um, I use top of the line nutrients um, top of the line coirs, top of the line lights, but at the same time, I know everybody's environment is different. Yeah. True. You know, not everybody has access to that. So if I'm having issues, bottom line, it's not going out. I'm not, yeah. I'm not even going to try and run it in my own garden. Um, I'll just call it and, and move on to the next. There's so many options out there. Why, why sit there and, and waste two or three times the amount of resources and energy on something that you think might pan out versus just right. moving on. Do you think that people, breeders often, sorry, kind of tangent here. This is what we do on no, Growcast. Do you think that uh, growers and breeders alike kind of get distracted by shiny objects, whether it's, you know, the new, new strain genetics that might not be quite so stable or even just proven out? Like, Absolutely. I, yeah. I kind of feel like Absolutely. people get distracted by shiny objects sometimes in life and growing. Um, you know, uh, it, 
if if somebody of um, reputation, so to speak, somebody who has that clout um, is even talking about it, it doesn't matter how crap it is for the for you and your garden once you get it. Most of those people are after it because so and so is talking about it. That's the unfortunate part about it. I mean, <laughs> um, stability and ease of grow, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's like, those should be like top of the list, right? Not who's, who's pushing it. You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, the stability they're talking about it. And I know if they are, and if I grow it and sell these flowers, <laughs> Joe Schmoe's going to be like, Oh, he's got flowers that I hate saying this, that burners fucking, you know, putting out there shit like sure. that. So it's yeah. like, I'm going to buy them. And it's like, man, that really makes it a lot harder for those of us who put in that um, much needed uh, quality control, so to speak, um, to to push ours when you have people simply buying off of um, popularity. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And and again, no shade to the mainstream breeders, but that is you're you're not pointing out a nature of the game that is totally the I, nature. I of totally the game. get it. Yeah. I totally get it. I'm just not going to take that route. Love it, man. I, I see can't, exactly. Can't what you're knock saying. the hustle. Can't knock. I've just got to hustle harder. <laughs> I, I like just gotta that. Gotta hustle man. harder. Yeah, totally. And I feel there is everybody's so specialized. Everybody has their own kind of niche. So, so very, very cool. Um, let's get back to your strains, though. What are you mm-hmm. working on now that you're most excited about, or uh, or maybe talk about a strain that my growers could go and pick up right now that you're particularly proud of? Absolutely. Um, I've got some stuff that I <clears throat> have available off of my uh, I smell gas line. Um, the mail for that is uh, Kim De La Kim. Uh, F2, which is Kim DI95. Everybody knows <laughs> knows it as that. Um, just, I mean, it it puts a new, uh, it raises the bar, so to speak, on um, burning burning rubber terpenes. It like if you've ever smelt burning rubber, this is that amplified. It, it's ridiculous. I've never smelt anything like it, and I really thought that it would um, be something unique. It's not really out there. Everybody talks about, oh yeah, those, you know, that, that burnt tire smell or tennis ball, you know, but you, it's, it's few and far between. Sure. Um, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> if you have neighbors, it's going to offend them. <laughs> if, if you're, if you're worried about, you know, uh, uh, odor seeping outside your house, you're going to want to run air scrubbers with this. Um, that whole line is just ridiculous. I took that to you know uh motor breath i took that to um uh trop cookies i took that to great pie i took that to just so many hitters the the lists i have posted on there are all current um some are sold out um, but uh there is definitely some available still off that line um there is the uh let's see um the big body gelatins that i just made the curry kush uh, the handyman, uh, outlaw Kim, um, all these are available. Um, just some very, very heavy hitters. The rest in peace crossed with the chem de la corpse or no, the chem de la chem. Chem de la corpse is the name of that. And it is rest in peace to the chem de la chem or I smell gas. Um, I've just got so much in, in the works. I'm trying to remember which males are used for which I don't want to misinform people, but again, the they lists are, are all, up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Go um, check the list. Is that, does that, uh, do you got, do you have that rotting flesh kind of carrion smell with that? I assume that's why you would name it. Chem de la corpse kind of smells like rotting. Some people uh, love that. So, term. Yes. And no, that was, um, sort of a play on the name ah, I see. as well as, Oh, duh. It's just, Rest in peace. It's, okay. It's funk. Yeah. It's okay. Funk. I get it. Sorry. I thought I was being, <laughs> thought I was being, no, no, you're good. no, rest in peace. <laughs> duh. That's where the corpse comes from. Okay. Still dude. I'm, yeah, I'm loving these lists. I would love to get some chem in my tent. I am a huge fan of gas. Um, Oh, the I'd wedding cake. Oh, for, oh, uh, and, we, we and just out. so everybody <laughs> knows, um, I will do a special simply, um, for anybody that mentions off of this show. Oh, um, that mention Growcast. It, it drives, yes, absolutely. Um, drives you up, gives me a little uh, uh, help as well. What do they get? Um, buy one, get one, no cap. Anything oh, off of there. shit, that's um, generous. The the special packs, they are more expensive, but anybody who, who mentions off of this show, they're all just a flat hundo. Any pack off my list. Wow, man. Okay, so this is dropping on the 22nd of February. 
how long how long can will this run for? We say uh, what a couple of weeks till the end of the month till the end of next month. How how long you want to run this? Twenty uh, second. Uh, we'll run it for two weeks. Boom, two weeks. You guys got it. Go and get it. Covert genetics. Uh, the Coffee Absolutely. Bay Cam. Oh, Coffee Bay Durban. Cross with yes. Okay, so that's so that's a place, every, not a flavor, not. Absolutely, ah, absolutely. Okay. Every I get that question all the time. I'm a coffee guy. Like coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, though. The Durban seeds were acquired in Coffee Bay, South Africa. Oh, whoa! That's dope. So that's that's where the name comes from. I wanted to pay homage to that and and distinguish the difference from the fabled Durban cut that you know is. The, very well known here in Colorado. I don't know if it's the same, same cut was passed around the United States, but I wanted to make sure that people knew that this was from seed was South African land race Durban seed. That's cool, dude. Coffee Bay, South Africa. Get some of those African genetics. Neat. Yes. Really, really neat. And then uh, looks like a couple of fire strains mixed in here. Wedding cake crossed with Chem de la Chem and Tropicana cookies crossed with Chem de la Chem. That sounds like something I would jump on there. Impressive Absolutely. stuff, man impressive stuff so you're carving through this line do you have another one in the works uh, for the future or what what happens uh, yes, after this the one? one that i just came out with um uh the uh what was it the i smell gas uh line the big body gelati uh the blacklist that's up there ah, I, see. Um, I see that one and then my very newest is off of the kim brulee um i did uh uh, I'm pretty sure that list is posted as well, but that's got the I-80, which is um, I-95 F2 to Kimberley. Um, I've got uh, Boats and Hose, which is exotic uh, genetics, uh, Florida OG, or excuse me, uh, G-Walk um, to uh, uh, Kimberley. Um, I've got uh, the Kimberley F2s in there. Um, the... Uh, Afterlife, I think, is the name that I went with it, but that's uh, another pheno of R.I.P. to Kimberley. Um, so just just an assortment. Um, I've got freebies mm-hmm. with with that whole list as well. Um, it's called High Note, and it's crescendo to uh, Kimberley. Oh, nice! That sounds great. Yeah, yeah. The the terpenes on that crescendo were just straight watermelon terps. So watermelon. It, that's gas. really gonna Love yeah, it. really gonna be a unique one. Love that, man. What a great, what a great mix you have here. A lot of, uh, a lot of variety. You got some old, you got some new, you got some unique, you got some hot covert genetics yeah. on Instagram. I'm, I'm struggling if, uh, <laughs> if I should, uh, run another one. I've got all these, um, either finished out, um, or that, like I said, that, that newest list is, uh, currently in testing. Um, so I'm just waiting to post photos of that. Um, but, uh, I've, I've got a couple of males on on hold that I've selected from the uh, halitosis and the Kim de la Kush that I made. Oh, um, nice! It's that. it's tough, man. When uh, when the demand is there, you know everybody wanted that halitosis, and it's like, well, I've got a stellar male in a room full of moms. That <laughs> it's like the possibilities are endless. Oh my god, I can only imagine, man. I was going to say that halitosis sounds pretty self-explanatory, those kind of bad breath phenos. Oh man. A lot of people Just are after those. Foul. Yeah. Foul. It's a good it's a good uh it's a good effect from that from that It's pheno, it's much heavier. That, I find turkey. I find the the funky, the dirty terps, um if you will, it's a more it's a, a heavier high. Yeah. It's it's a more sedative whereas yes. the fruits no no disrespect to the people who like them. But it's a much lighter high. I've got to smoke much more of them, or it just doesn't last as long. Yeah, and for I, me, I, I need it to to hang in there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like when it helps womp you. The terps help womp you in my in my ungodly tolerance. Because um, sometimes when the when the fruity strains are too delicious and they don't pack enough of a punch, I just smoke them and smoke them and smoke them, and then they're mm-hmm. gone. And then that was you know. So it's different yeah. strokes for different folks. But um, yeah. but yeah. We'll get right back to covert genetics, but first, rainsciencegrowbags.com, one of my favorite partners of ours, code GROWCAST gets you 10% off the best containers in growing. Listen, you don't want to be using those plastic pots because when your roots hit the edge, they just keep growing and spinning and spinning and spiraling. You want them to air prune. That's right. Get yourself in a mesh grow bag like the rain science, the best containers around, and that way, When your roots hit the edge of the container, they air prune and they begin to branch laterally instead. That's what really fills in that root ball. You ever busted open one of those plastic pot root balls and on the inside it's not very filled out? 
Again, it's because they just kind of spiral at the edge of the pot. You got to step up your game. Grab a Rain Science Grow Bag from RainScienceGrowBags.com. Use code GROWCAST for a whopping 10% discount. And you will eliminate uh, serious overwatering issues. You will increase airflow. You'll get that air pruning. Easy uh, Velcro kind of um, unfasteners for up potting. It's what you need. They're the best containers around, in my humble opinion. Reusable, washable, they'll last forever. All sorts of different colors, and they have low stress training grommets optional. Amazing. RainScienceGrowbacks.com. Use code GROWCAST. You'll thank me later, everybody. All right, let's get back to covert. You know, one thing I would like to focus in on is the chem brulee itself. Maybe you can talk about the F2s in particular, since you're selecting further down the filial lines there. But uh, what yeah. can what what could someone expect when growing out creme brulee, chem brulee, um, as far as things like stretch and yield and any uh, high feeding, low feeding, any particular attributes to the chem brulee that we should know about? Yeah. So um, in regards to the F1s, um, those are going to hold the the lemon phenos the really lemon terpenes whether it's crisp um vibrant or just really dirty lemon terps mm. now for the f2s i wanted to go a different direction i'll talk about um flower times and structures and that for both but with the f2s uh since i already made a lemon line um i wanted to see if i could find uh a chem brulee that didn't have like that really pronounced lemon profile sure. finds a different and note absolutely and now there is a cut that's held here in colorado that is just all kim i wanted to search my own seeds um because that one was found in a facility by a friend um mm-hmm. so I, I did a hunt found one in particular that was just uh like rancid paint fumes if you will I, it's hard to explain but the mom herself was just fucking ridiculously loud it burned your nose it wasn't like a, a gym sock or anything like that kind of dirty it was it was like chemical um <laughs> Tear and gas. it really yeah it it really matched the copper chem mom that i used and and the way that that mom was described was bleach in a bag <laughs> like like you put bleach in a paper bag and and took a little huff of it it was just like whoa <laughs> knock you back and clear your nose yeah, yeah. It, it, it bit you in the chest Nice. And those were the exact profiles that I was looking for. And, and the male was pretty much the exact copy of it as far as structure, um, uh, stem rub, uh, uh, growth rate, hey, growth <laughs> rates, <laughs> um, and, and everything of the sort, the flower clusters on him were just like mop heads, fucking ridiculous. Damn. So it was, it was just, uh, a, a, a must for, for me to use both of those. Um, as far as for the F2s, because there was, in my opinion, there wasn't any lemons at all. Um, nice. And it was the closest that I could find to the uh, the original mom. Trying to concentrate that gas down, it sounds like. Absolutely, absolutely. Nice. Now, for the, the structures and stuff like that for the F1s um, and, and growth times, those are, you know, anywhere from eight to nine weeks. Um, and those I actually am offering. <laughs> I got a lot to offer here. Um, I'll get into that. Um, the, the structure, uh, it's going to stretch. It's going to stretch. It's more on the sativa side, um, from the, the lemon brulee. Um, and, um, you're going to want to support that either trellis or uh, stakes. Um, the F2s, um, they're running uh, eight to 10 weeks, um, depending on the phenos. Um, as far as right now, I, I, I haven't finished out flower yet, so I can't give a 100%. Yeah. You're going to want to pull within these time frames no problem but uh, that's my estimated time frame i don't i don't like to put out anything longer than 10 weeks um <laughs> i'm impatient so i appreciate that yeah no i, I just don't have the time it's turn and burn um uh, but uh <laughs> um so and structure on that it was it was very structurally sound for both male female um it's really gonna uh, uh add some rigidity to that structure very knobby on on the uh on the connection points, if you will, where the, the main branches come off the main trunk. Oh, nice. Um, every, everything was just knuckled out. Love that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, in the end, I did have to add some stakes on it because the the but, the flowers on the, the Kimberle were just, they're too heavy. Um, but uh, you, it, throws, it throws down. <laughs> nice. A heavy yielder compared to your average cannabis definitely. strain. Definitely. Oh, man. 
I am sold, buddy. I've got a pretty booked. I'm a good boy. I do do my stupid plant count here in Illinois. They keep us low. But uh, mm-hmm, as soon as mm-hmm. I open up some room, I would love to get some of that some of that chem in my tent, man. Because you. Well, I'd be happy to send you send you a care pack for whenever you're ready. You make it sound delicious the way you describe it here on air, man. So, <laughs> you said uh, what were you going to say about a chem offer? Did you have something? You wanted oh, to so I I have um, the remaining stock off of my. Um, lemon line the one that i uh use my lemon brulee mail um yeah. and i'd be happy to offer um uh, a free free pack off of uh that line for, for any order that comes in um on top of the buy one get one so you're really getting buy one get two free um but Damn. the uh, the selection is just made by me you uh you better be careful man you're gonna get a rush here so be prepared <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it i mean it's uh it's the least i can do for having having me on your show um try to offer people the most for their dollar i know oh, everybody's no uh working hard to make a little extra so if yeah, i can add now. a little extra to it i will Cool, man. We appreciate that. And it's interesting because I just did a poll not too long ago in the Growcast Growers chat, our little Slack chat community, now over 500 people in there. And uh, I I did a uh, little poll. What type of, uh, they were kind of, I guess you could say terp profiles, but they were kind of broad terp profiles. What type Mm -hmm. of terp profile do you uh, prefer the most? And Mm -hmm. the two that tied for the top seem seemingly instantaneously, and no matter how many votes came in, were fruit and gas. Fruit and gas. And there was a lot of ancillary ones. Like some people voted like uh, other and put chocolate, you know, for me, yeah, coffee yeah. is up near the top of my list. But if you want to take a look at what the grow kind of culture appreciates as a whole, you mm-hmm. get fruit and you get gas. Skunk is, is also like this one that's like making a resurgence now. But uh, mm-hmm. those two, I feel, have never gone away, the fruit and gas. So I like oh. to see people who specialize in those. I really do. Absolutely. And and uh, like to clarify, fun, uh, my my dirty funky um, that I consider that gas. Any anything that's just offensive, um, OGs are there's varying degrees of gas. There's the sweet. Right. There's the uh, yeah. I mean, just it's a broad spectrum of terpenes. It's hard for me to describe because I'm not I'm not into that field for one. I, um, I know but, exactly what you're saying, though. You're saying some of those OGs have more of an earthy gas tone. Yeah, whereas yeah like, it definitely varies. Whereas like the solid diesel, like a like a New York City diesel smells mm-hmm. like diesel. And you're right. Mm-hmm. It takes on different kind of shades of gas. Yes, That's exactly yeah. right. I love that uh, old school, like humble OG, because that would always carry a nice gas note with it. You said you're from Nebraska. It's like a, I know it's like a horrible state legislatively, but I know that people I, love weed in Nebraska. Um, was that, was there like a weed scene uh, yes there? No, the, the kids love weed there. Um, sure. it seems like all the adults, man, I was constantly getting in trouble there for it. I had to get out of that state. I don't blame uh, you. <laughs> as much as I love, yeah. As much as I love cannabis, it was just, it's a stagnant state. Um, I don't know when they're going to get their shit together, but, um, <laughs> maybe when they do, you know, that'll open the door to other avenues for me since, you know, that's my home state, but, uh, I thought you were going to say like, that's the shit you got back in Nebraska that you really wanted to, you know, but, but it sounds like you just needed to get out. Cause it's a, it's a pretty, um, conservative, I guess you could say it's not even the right word. It's just anti-marijuana. The state's anti-marijuana, man. I mean, if you're not born into something or a student, it's, it's super difficult. Yeah. Nebraska. I mean, people, people say, you know, well, how are you able to make it in Colorado? It's like, well, I mean, you get what you put, put in for one. Oh, I'm, I'm not a fucking slacker. I'll, I'll work anywhere as many jobs as I need to, but, uh, <laughs> I'm able to get further with the amount that I'm putting in here than I was ever, to, ever able to get in Nebraska with the amount of work that I put in there. Yikes. It was, it was impossible. It's like they, they hold you in a stalemate. It's uh, a sad tableau. I'll have to tell on this uh, podcast, getting pulled over in Nebraska and some of my Nebraska stories, but glad we're on the same page. Glad you're now living your dream in Colorado and they can enjoy, uh, they can enjoy the cornfields, man. We love what you're doing. F- fulfilling your <laughs> dream, that. working double time. That's uh, that's my kind of shit. Absolutely. Uh, one more time at covert genetics on Instagram, go give them a follow everybody, hit them up, take advantage of uh, all those lovely offers. Before we sign off here, man, I do like to ask about breeding tips. 
not necessarily giving away any, you know, secret playbooks, but there are some home breeders, some pollen chuckers in the Growcast mm-hmm. audience that like to uh, that like to play around. Do you have any general tips for breeders getting started? Maybe like a mind state thing. Or maybe tell us about selecting, you know, selecting males. What advice do you have for breeders who are getting started out there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely have a, a, a goal in mind as far as um, what you are trying to create, so to speak. I mean, I know it's hard to envision it, uh, what the plant and everything is going to look like in your head as a first-time breeder. Um, and it's still difficult, um, even, you know, this far in the game, if not farther, to in- envision beforehand but um with all things said um try and try and have a plan a a picture of what you'd like to create um what you think each parent is going to provide because you um you really don't know what uh, the dominant dominant and recessive traits are in either of them and what they're going to pass on um until you run the pro gene and see what you know what was provided by each parent if you can even see that sometimes you get a nice blend that's just man, that's, it's hard to tell what added what, but sure. they made something phenomenal. Um, if you've worked, uh, one or two of the parents, um, you can definitely start to see more of what they, uh, have to offer. Um, but that game plan in the beginning, as well as throughout is crucial selecting. Um, that's all personal preference for me. Um, I select based on, on what I like to see. Um, I don't like my nodes too tight. Uh, I know lots of people just like big old uh, Coke can or Coke bottles and stuff like that. But um, for me, that the the buds don't ever uh, develop properly in the center. You mm. you get um, that light uh, light green color, uh, lack of trichome development on the inside. It's strictly on the outside. It, it's hard to form trichomes when everything's so damn dense. That's so true, true. for me, I really need a little bit of space in between my nodes. Um, that's why I love OG structures very much because you get the nice golf balls that form all the way around. Great for washing, great for blasting, great for the bag. Um, love it. Stem rub is critical for me. If mm. if my plants don't stink prior to even going into flower, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even interested. Um, one of, one of uh, uh, the pieces of advice that I got from uh, an, an old Mendo grower um, that uh, I was talking to about breeding um, tips was uh, he said uh, in his experience, the leaves that had more definition, more rigidity to them, deeper lines, serrations, mm. things of the sort generally meant a, a stinkier plant in his experience huh. and i i kind of carried that with mine and and i love the saw blades i love shark teeth on my 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 fan that's an interesting observation leaves. the the um, leaf rigidity i had not heard that one before i i can't you know there's no science behind it sure. for me that's except an observation. for i seem to be landing some foul fucking plants <laughs> <laughs> okay. interesting um, so stuff man all these things kind of uh um bundled together have allowed me to um give you what you see on my page and i would really uh push people towards that as far as selections um uh pick what you like it's 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 hard to please everybody yeah um so you start with a few and word of mouth really carries and if this is something that you as a new breeder um are trying to do um for other people um, and, and really turn it into something outside of a closet project. Um, then, then you're going to have to take some low blows as far as, Hey, I didn't care for that. What, what did you see? This wasn't what you, you sure. know, told me it was going to be as far as it didn't grow this tall, or it was a, a slow veg or, or my flowers didn't look like yours because everybody seems to fucking think that the photos that somebody posts is exactly what they're going to fucking see in their garden. And I mean, it's not always works like that. It's true. It it does not always work like that. You exactly nailed it. And you're right because sometimes when you take it out of the closet and into the world, it takes it from your hobby to a job. And sometimes that's not what everybody is looking for, but we do appreciate those like you, especially, um, you know, working on a specific type of uh, goal, like your gaseous Mm -hmm. lines. 
like your eye heart, what is it? I smell gas line, for instance. So yes, yes. So yeah, man, we appreciate everything you're doing, Covert Genetics. Thank you for your offers. Thank you for coming on the show, doing the breeder feature. We wish you best of luck. Any uh, any final words before we wrap up? Yeah, just make sure you mention this show for the freebies. Um, I, it's okay to be direct with me. I don't take anything uh, uh, out of context. Um, I know you're just uh, after what you're paying for, so. Oh, you'll see a, you'll see an influx, buddy. Go and get it at covert genetics on Instagram is where you'll find them. Everybody. That's all for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in all you listeners. This is covert genetics and Jordan river signing off saying, have an extraordinary day. Be safe out there. Stay warm and grow smarter. Thanks guys. That's our show. I hope you enjoyed today's breeder feature. Excuse me. Uh, thank you to covert genetics. Of course, wonderful, wonderful show today before we wrap it up. Smoke Trap is one of our newer partners. It is the best for hiding the odor of your smoking. Smoketrap.com code GROWCAST for 10% off your smoke traps. I love the Smoke Trap. It's better than just using one of those spoof tubes because you don't. You know what the problem with the spoof tubes is besides the fact that they're gross and they look like garbage and you're technically touching something that is toilet paper and belongs in the bathroom is uh, when you cough into them and then you inhale back some of the dryer sheet dust. That's not what I'm about. I love the smoke traps. Use code GROWCAST. We partnered with these guys for GROWCAST TV, and uh, now they're partners. So how about that, everybody? Show them some love. Thank you so much. Let me show you some love. You subscribers are incredible. Stay tuned. Got some great stuff coming at you on GROWCAST. GROWCAST TV, humming along for members over in Patreon. Having so much fun, and it's all thanks to you guys. I cannot thank you enough. I cannot express my gratitude accurately other than to just say, stay tuned for some great content. And thank you all. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.